Yo guys, my name's Neil. I'm a fully qualified maths teacher. I'm actually a personal trainer too, actually. Check out the games. I mean, I guess I'll roll my sleeves down. I've been the head of A-level maths at multiple schools in London. I'm an accredited examiner too, usually marking the A-level further maths exams. And most of your ages, around 16, I'd already achieved an A-star in my maths A-level, then securing an A-star in further maths a year later. If you're new to this video, make sure you check out part one, where I go through more revision tips. Anyways, my third point is that you need to watch your mindset. Especially with maths, you need to be approaching questions calmly, slowly, Systematically, I don't want to hear about any of you frantically flicking through your practice papers, not being able to answer questions you could have done if you just took a few seconds to think through. If you see a question you don't completely understand or you see a concept you don't recognize, stop for just a second, breathe. Sometimes you just need to move on to the next question. Don't worry about it, chill out, chill out. How many times have you walked out of a test and realized how to answer that question you were stuck on? It be like that sometimes. It's an incredible feeling, but only if you're actually in the exam and not after. Move on to another question. Something may click and yeah, you can go back and solve the previous one. To have a calm mindset, you also need to be taking active steps to make sure you stay peaceful and unstressed. Shout out to my meditators. In addition to what I mentioned above about having the right exercise, nutrition, and sleep, you need to be having the right amount of fun during exam prep. Go to different places to study or throw in a group study session. Oh, that didn't go towards the camera. My kind of fun, you're probably asking, well, is to have some chicken, broccoli, and pasta. It always hits the spot. And obviously playing with my kit and Chi-Chi. Who is an absolute menace? A study by King's College London found that walking by nature and water can significantly improve your well being and mood. Wow, I'm so happy! When I was taking my exams, I can't lie, I never went to the library, but I always enjoyed a walk around the block listening to Mac Miller and classical music. If you're a Londoner, I recommend Regent's Holy Park. Molly. Shout out to everyone who's been to Regent's Park. If you like me to do another video on well-being, just let me know in the comments. Something that I always mention to my students is slow down. There's a tune about that. Slow down, I just wanna get to know you. What tune is that? Is it even recording? Oh, it is. Oh, shout out Bobby Valentino. It's important to have a healthy attitude about your revision. A lot of my students are scared of starting their revision because they're afraid they won't understand and won't be able to answer exam questions. But guys, that's calm. This is all part of the game. Nothing good in life is worth it if it comes easy. Encounter your difficulties and work through them. With my students, I revise with them live, in lesson, and I detail their revision. Oh, I forgot, I hate that word, man. And I detail their revision structure as we go along completing exam questions. This way, they fine tune their attention to topics as we continue through the year. By the end of the year, they are a polished mathematician. My mentors are brilliant university students who have done everything you have done and more. They're there to guide you through questions as well as help you with general vision tips and tricks. If you're interested in any of these support streams, click the link down below. My fourth point is that you need to be aware of how you're approaching questions. The first thing I'm gonna say is the obvious. You need to go over every single mistake you make. Understand the reason you made the mistake and learn how to not make the same mistake again. Now in maths, there can only be three reasons you make a mistake. One, you make a mistake on a question you understand that you could answer. You just didn't pay enough attention and copied the question down wrong or put in a simple random minus sign, it always happens. Or you didn't show you're working, missed a step and made a mistake calculating in your head. Looking deeper, you might have been stressed or not have gotten enough sleep, which is what I've mentioned before, is why it's so important. Number two is you don't understand. You try a question thinking you revised it, look through examples, but in reality, you don't actually understand what's going on, which is fine. In that case, you need to look over the topic again and perhaps ask a teacher or a friend. A lot of this occurs when students flick through papers, they say I can do X, Y, Z, and they don't even attempt it. Every question is important in your practice. Please don't be that person. Yes, you, you know you've done that before. Shout out. 
to all my people who've done it before. And the third thing here is you just haven't looked over the topic. This one is obviously self-explanatory. If you've not had a proper crack at the topic, you're not gonna be able to magically answer the questions during practice or most crucially, your exams. It's the easiest one to solve and it's never too late to start. Just because exams are coming up doesn't mean you can't pick up new concepts and jump up few grades. If you look over a question you got wrong and it's because of the second or third reason, it's extremely important to be looking over these topics and actively trying to solve more questions of that type which is why with my year 13s for example we'll be completing around 50 practice papers between March and May they will find these topics they're weak at. The next mistake is something I see students do all the time they start revising at the very start of the syllabus or the textbook. With exams just around the corner, you need to be focusing on topics you find challenging. Do not start at chapter one unless you're certain you're unsure of something there. Start with where you are most likely to lose marks. Of course, if you start revising early enough, you might be able to start from the beginning. However, I see a lot of students try this, get overwhelmed when they think they need to solve the whole textbook and give up or become disheartened. So start with the hard topics that you're weakest at. My next point that I want to make is that you should be doing as many questions as you can from the widest range of sources you can find. Students who aren't on my course and do not have access to my bank or revision papers often tell me they run out of practice papers. I tell them to try papers from other examples, particularly at GCSE, questions are all very similar. If you do questions from another board, I promise nothing bad will happen. If you see a topic you definitely do not need to know, skip it and move on. Also, the mixed exercises in textbooks are also pretty good. They have a decent collection of past exam questions. As you get more fluent within your revision, you need to start doing timed revision before your exams. A lot of students can do the questions and understand the materials, but GCSEs and A-levels can be highly time pressured. And whilst you're practicing, you need to be sure you can complete the questions in the allocated time. Usually it works out to about a mark a minute. With that being said, do not attempt time revision before you're ready. Did I wake you up? I told you I was gonna try and explain this without you guys falling asleep. So, if you do not fully understand a concept, it is far more valuable to think through a topic and find out how to do it instead of jumping straight into time to practice. When I first started revising papers with my students, my streams can last up to two and a half hours, mm -hmm. but over time, we finish around the two hour mark. But anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you want more content like this, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Drop a comment on what you wanna see next. If you're new here, make sure you check out my part one video where I go through more revision tips. What? If you're new to this video, make sure you check out part one where I go through more revision tips. Anyways, grade nine, Aquaman out, peace.